How do we know a place? Most people might respond to this question of epistemology by answering, through experience, of course. But what if we've never been to that place before? What if we've never experienced it before? Then how can we imagine what that place is like? For example, what if I mention England to you? What first comes to your mind? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give you a moment. Okay, so what first came to your mind? A person, perhaps? Maybe the Queen. Or maybe you thought of a landmark like Big Ben. Or maybe you chose the more sensuous route and chose something like fish and chips. Or maybe you thought of something from their popular culture, like Monty Python. Well, if that's too esoteric for you, uh, maybe Harry Potter. The point is, no matter what you thought of, how is it that when we think of England, we think of certain things, certain people, certain places, certain foods? Well, I guess the most obvious answer to that question would have to be the media, along with friends and family who have had direct contact with British people and culture. And through their experiences and stories, we learn about what kind of a place Britain is and what the people are like. We paint a picture in our minds of what kind of a place England is or should be. If you were hired by the British government to make a television ad for them to entice more tourists to come to England, how would you go about producing it? What images and people would you include? What kind of music? How could you capture the essence of what England truly is? Or would you play to what your intended audience supposes England is? Have you got your commercial in mind? Well, let's take a look at how one advertising agency in 2002 decided to entice American tourists to come across the pond and spend some time in jolly old England. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to cordially invite you to enjoy the pleasures of Britain. Savor a cup of tea. Visit a historic house. Have a spot of lunch at the King's Head. We could meet up in Trafalgar Square. Take a walk in the country. Or indulge yourself in our sporting traditions. To find great offers, go to Britain2002.org for offers you may never see again. Welcome. So was that what you had in mind? For some, maybe. For others, maybe not. Many times, one location may create different images to different people. In this modern world, where international travel has become more and more commonplace, individuals find themselves traveling to increasingly distant countries and locales for business as well as pleasure. One such location is Taiwan. In recent years, Taiwan has spent a great deal of money on international advertising and promoting an image of Taiwan to entice foreign guests to come and let Taiwan touch their heart. Come see the beauty, the island so colorful. Come taste the best, the people so friendly. For your heart to feel and see. Ila Famosa, Taiwan will touch your heart. This 30-second advertisement, along with subsequent others that aired on international news channels like CNN, highlight the distinctiveness of Taiwan and its qualities. We are presented with images of Taiwan's modern metropolises, natural scenery, local traditions, culture, cuisine, and people. From such ads, we begin to understand and have a conceptual image or identity of what Taiwan is, along with what experiences and encounters we might have if we were to visit there. Taiwan has not only been encouraging international, but domestic tourism as well. Taiwanese are bombarded with images and ideas of what certain locales are like. One such location that has received attention recently as a place of domestic tourism is the country village Naewon. And just like the examples mentioned earlier, it too is a site of multiple, conceptual images and identities. What those identities and images are, and who conceives of them, is all a part of being Naewon. Naewon. 